Good afternoon. Now the first session of the afternoon begins. Um, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Himmet Umunch and the chairperson, Professor Dr. Aysu Erdan. Distinguished colleagues, their students, their guests, first of all, I wish to express my gratitude to, prof pro to Professor, I'm very excited, uh, to Professor Burchin Erol for her inviting me to the conference, for her giving me the chance, the privilege to chair Professor Himmet Umunch, who is, who was my instructor, my professor, when I was a uh, university student at Hacettepe University, and <laughs> <laughs> and Milattan önce Burçin was my close friend, <laughs> although she is younger than me, <laughs> some years younger than me. Okay. Um, well, uh, I would like to introduce. Professor uh, Himmet Umunch, I know you all, all of you know him, but let me read his uh, background. Professor Himmet Umunch received his PhD from the University of London, King's College in 1974. He was promoted associated professor in 1981 and full professor in 1970. 87. He taught British culture and literature for over 40 years in the Department of English Language and Literature, Hacettepe University in Ankara. Currently, he is affiliated with Bashkent University, serving as the chair of both the Department of American Culture and Literature and the Department of English. His research interests include British studies, American studies, representation of Turkey in British and American writers, writings, literary theory and criticism, cultural studies, and comparative literature. He has published in learned journals and presented papers at national and international conferences. The title of his speech, of his paper, is very interesting for me also, because I'm interested in those uncanny characters. Um, rogues, drunkards, prostitutes, Shakespeare's others. <coughs> in other words, the neglected others, the ignored characters, the uncanny heroes of literature, of Shakespearean plays, plays or stories from the dark side of life and journey and about journeys through the passageways of human soul, um, through the passageways of the souls of Shakespearean characters. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. It is uh, indeed a uh, very unique uh, pleasure for me to be back in my old department where I served for 42 years. Professor Emel Doramaji, is she? Oh, yes. <laughs> there she comes. <laughs> Especially, 
our students at the back, the young ones, who may not have a full familiarity with the history of the department, let me just give you a very brief uh, uh, piece of information. The department was founded by Professor Doramaji, Amal Doramaji, back in 1965, and I joined the department in February 1968 as a young research assistant. And the, uh, so I retired in 2010. So all that long period, I served in the department. Professor Doramaji uh, was our leader, our mother, our uh, uh, <laughs> mentor, our professor, and the indeed our hojamas, our dean. And the, if the Faculty of Letters today has reached the level where it is, and it has uh, all these uh, smiling and uh, shining faced, a Shakespearean phrase, uh, students, it is due to Professor Doramaji's long service. The faculty was created out of nothing. And now it has become the largest, the most uh, efficient faculty of this university. So I am proud of having been a member of that faculty and having been uh, a member of, that, of this department. So in this, uh, with this short uh, remark, uh, of course, I would extend my uh, thanks to, the, to Professor M uh, Burchin Errol, the head of the department and her colleagues for the organizers to give me a chance to talk on Shakespeare. Some of you, not uh, well experienced enough in Shakespeare, may find this paper a, a dirty one, a little bit. Uh, uh, but seriously, uh, for me, it is an attempt in uh, literary sociology. In other words, to look at Shakespeare and his world with a sociological awareness. I am not a sociologist, but the uh, uh, general picture that the paper uh, will uh, try to uh, present will be a, not only a literary, but also a cultural, sociological uh, appearance of Shakespeare's England and Shakespeare's London. Of course, we know Shakespeare, we've been talking about Shakespeare, Shakespeare the Elizabethan. But Shakespeare over the century, as Professor Hallman in the morning uh, told us with great uh, delight, over the centuries, Shakespeare has been transformed or metamorphosed into invariable forms and shapes and the identities. Here is uh, a new one. Shakespeare, our postmodern contemporary. Uh, back in the 1960s, a Polish Shakespearean, Jan Kot, published a book which really caused a stir in the Shakespeare world. It was entitled, Shakespeare, Our Contemporary. Of course, then uh, we were young, uh, you see, uh, students and the uh, young assistants. How can it be? How can Shakespeare be our contemporary? Of course, we had no notion of being uh, contemporary. So here is uh, uh, a picture of uh, Shakespeare, our contemporary. But of course, I'll be talking about Shakespeare, the Elizabethan. Let me begin 
with a statement by the Cambridge historian, Geoffrey Elton. He said, Shakespeare must be read and seen, but not talked about. <laughs> Admittedly, you know, for discipline of the paper and the time, I have to look at my uh, writings. Admittedly, the dramatic spectacle of a Shakespeare play on the stage can be most moving, entertaining, thought-provoking, and in the case of his tragedies, cathartic. Similarly, a reader's imaginative reconstruction of a Shakespeare play's action can also produce in the mind a vast range of new ideas and impressions. Yet, Shakespeare's drama also ought to be analyzed, discussed, debated, and argued about from all perspectives, and there is the rub, as Hamlet says. However profoundly, learnedly, extensively Shakespeare may have been talked about, he cannot be exhausted and done with. Each time a Shakespeare play is read, or speaking post-structurally, decoded into innumerable signifieds, it is rewritten and encoded into many signifiers in the mind of the reader, constantly turning into new signifieds. That is what Shakespeare criticism and scholarship has demonstrated for centuries. Shakespeare's dramatic constructs of human conditions his inspiring insights into the human nature, his unfathomable dramatic discourse will undoubtedly continue to preoccupy scholars and researchers for many, many years to come and urge them into formulating new creative and eye-opening interpretations, arguments, and comments. The core issue in Shakespeare criticism and scholarship has always been the question of emphasis. The question of what subject or topic is more important and worthwhile in Shakespeare for study and research, and hence arises a dialectic relationship of the marginal and the central. For instance, in the analysis and discussion of Shakespeare's characters, Traditional Shakespeare criticism has mostly focused on major characters, as Professor Aishegül uh, Yüksel was doing on women. What one may categorize as his marginal and dramatically less focal characters have seldom been taken into account. They appear to be socially and dramatically of secondary importance and mostly include rogues, thugs, vagrants, drunkards, harlots, prostitutes, and other types of law life. Yet in standard Shakespeare studies, they have received little or no critical attention, with the exception, of course, of Falstaff, who in this regard can be called the arch rogue. As the dramatic projections of Elizabethan London's criminal underworld these marginal characters can be referred to as Shakespeare's others. So this paper is a concise discussion within the social and cultural context of Elizabethan England of Shakespeare's representation of this criminal underworld and its social others. In fact, Shakespeare's creative and working familiarity with London's Underworld is well known. Personally, both as an actor and as a playwright, he lived in the suburbs such as Shoreditch, which would be around here, and the uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, in short, in the northwest of city walls and the Southwark down here on the South Bank. As will be discussed later on, especially these two suburbs were most popular for fun, debauchery, and criminality. 
historically viewed, Elizabethan London did, with the exclusion of Westminster and Greenwich, consist of the city itself, which is this vast uh, area with St. Paul's Cathedral, which burned down in the 17th, in the in 1660 Great Fire. Uh, <coughs> city itself and the suburbs around it. Shore, here, Southwark, Shoreditch, Crackenville, and the East Chap on this side. East Cheap, sorry. <coughs> Over 73% of London's population lived in the city, here, and the rest lived in the suburbs, which were outside the jurisdiction of the city of administration, and were characterized by what Sharp has called a distinctly proletarian flavor, unquote. As the socially and the culturally vibrant metropolis of Elizabethan England, and the fast-growing emporium of overseas trade, the uh, Thames, the London of the elite and the prosperous was, as J.A. Sharp has described, the national focal point for the arts, for literature, and for taste and fashion. The sons of the gentry and of the patricians of provincial towns